really quick before we transition out of basketball, we didn't we had a, we had a new coach in hire in Brooklyn. We didn't get to talk about this on our uh, recap, <laughs> but uh, Steve Nash is uh is 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 the coach of the Brooklyn Nets. Um, I'm still not completely happy about the the selection, just because and and, and it. It's not to take away anything from Steve Nash because we know what Steve Nash has done as a player, but he has no coaching experience. And if you want to talk about being thrown into the wolves, as good as that Nets team is on, on paper when everyone one is healthy, it's still a situation where you're being thrown into the wolves because you're dealing with two superstars that are – sensitive um and you know they take a lot of things personal personal uh, you know so it, it it may get tough if they don't come out the gate looking like championship contenders if they struggle starting off the season it could get very tough for steve nash the only plus that i see right just right now just based off the hire is that i know that the nets didn't hire Steve Nash without the okay from Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. So I know, you know, they have that level of respect. I mean, you're talking about a two-time uh, MVP and Steve Nash. So they have respect for Steve Nash. And, I, and, and I'm hoping that respect will carry over into the season and they can do some great things. But outside of that, the inexperience, you know, and we're talking about, we're not talking about a player who won a championship as a player. You know, these guys got more championships than, than Steve Nash has. Steve Nash hasn't even been to a finals. So that's where I'm like a little bit, I don't know if this was the right pick. I did it, you know, and I felt like they had time. They didn't have to, to hire a coach right now. Um, I know they were talking about Pop, which, I mean, that would have been, in itself, that would have been kind of crazy if they were able to get Pop. But there's other guys out there, Ty Lu. You know, was still was still available. You you know, I'm all for Mark Jackson getting another uh, coaching chance in in this league, and I thought it would have been perfect. He would have been you know right back in New York, but they hired Steve Nash. I mean, we got a four year uh, deal, so we're gonna have to just wait and see. But uh, what do you think, Eric? I think it's a terrible hire, um, and I'm willing to stand on that comment, even if it does work out. If it does work out, you can play this back and be like, Hey, you were, you were completely wrong about it, but I don't think it's going to work at all. Uh, these two guys, Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving are two of the moodiest superstars the league has ever seen. And they could have all the respect in the world for Steve Nash as a player. That does not mean that that transitions over to his coaching style. Um, again, no coaching experience. He wasn't a head coach or an assistant coach at any level that at least that I've heard of. I mean, maybe, you know, he was a special advisor to the Golden State Warriors while Kevin Durant was there. So maybe that, that's where the connection with Kevin Durant comes in. But yeah. being a special advisor and working part-time hours does not equate to the wear and tear that it takes to be a head coach in the NBA. All right? It's a long season. Uh, there's a lot of media requests. There are a lot of issues. You're dealing with 12 to 15 different personalities on your team. And again, when you got these two guys on the team, that in itself is a full-time job managing their personalities and their mood swings. So now you put him in that situation in New York City where we know the media is relentless and ruthless. And then you add on the fact that now there are going to be these expectations for the Brooklyn Nets because they finally get KD and Kyrie on the court at the same time. So yep. all those things now for a first-time head coach, for him to try to navigate, I think this thing goes left. Are they a playoff team? Absolutely. I would be lying to you if I didn't think Katie and Kyrie could get to the playoffs together. It would, you and, and I could coach. Them. Yeah, they right. Got you, <laughs> right. You and I could coach the Nets and get them to the playoffs. I, you know what I'm saying? But now when you get in the playoffs, is Steve Nash going to be good enough to get the best out of those guys and be able to advance? Is he going to be an X and, X's and O's guy who's going to be able to know how to exploit matchups? Or is he going to be a guy who's just going to rely on the fact that he has two supremely gifted ball handlers who can get baskets anytime they want. Yeah, you got to listen. You, you, you know, you gotta, you not to mention, to there was a little friction in, you're right, you're going to have to coach. And and let's not forget that there was a little bit of friction in that locker room last year when it was only Kyrie because some of the younger guys felt like maybe his leadership isn't the best for us. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So 
What do you do with Karis LeVert? What do you do with Spencer Dinwiddie? These are, these are really good ball players who are going to wonder how is Steve Nash going to compliment my game now? Am I just, do I just become a guy who's got to stand in the corner because he only wants to get yeah. roll the ball out for Katie and Kyrie? I think this thing goes left. I think the Nets rushed it, as you mentioned, because they never sat down with Ty Lue, with Mark Jackson, with Sam Cassell. There's a lot of good coaches out there. You know what I'm saying? Um, let, let's not forget when these playoffs, playoffs are done and each round goes by, we're going to see more coaches get fired anyway. So there's yeah. going to be the opportunity. You know, if Houston loses, it, let's say Houston loses in five, is Mike D'Antoni back? He might be available. You know what I'm saying? So there are other coaches that you could have waited on. You didn't have to rush. And I don't think anybody else was looking to hire Steve Nash. So what was the point of rushing to hire him? No one had him on their radar. Yeah, and let me just say this, Eric. Not, you know, I need to, you made a statement. I need to correct you on it. If two of us was coaching and that's they win a championship, let's just make that clear. Oh, right oh here. yeah. Oh yeah, let's not let's not make any mistake about that. But okay, what I'm saying, but what I'm saying is, we don't have neither one of us have NBA coaching experience. Yeah. We could get him to the playoffs too, right? Like we got 2K experience, yeah, exactly. so we, we could get you there. We could get you there. Exactly, we could definitely you know get you saying? there. But that's and this is why I also because for a lot of the things that you said in regards to those younger guys, this is why I think the Nets are going to wind up trading a couple of those guys and to try to bring in a third all-star onto this onto this team just because of exactly what you were saying about LaVert and, and, and I love LaVert I think he's an, he's an amazing talent then what you know then has been my guy for years you know that that and is a fact Mason, that's a fact he, when he had the points the, the point stash okay you know that's been <laughs> my guy so I would love to see him stay in Brooklyn and, and if they could get to the, to the championship and get a title with the team but I think that a couple of those guys are going to get moved it's probably going to be Jared Allen just because DeAndre Jordan was Kevin Durant's guy and Kevin Durant wanted him to start, which I didn't, I didn't like per se just because Jared Allen was developing really well and I think he would have gotten even better, especially with Durant and, and, and Kyrie Irving there. But I think he's going to probably wind up being traded and maybe one or two of those other guys will, will get traded for, for another – uh, all-star caliber player, um, but you know, we'll get, again, I, I think it was a, it was a little premature making that decision right now. But I but I gotta I gotta I gotta stick with it. You know, what I'm saying as the, as the Nets fan on the show and just hope it works out. You know, when you when you have two all-world players on the same team, especially in the Eastern Conference, there's a good chance that they'll be able to make it to the NBA Finals just based off of the talent of a healthy Kevin Durant and a healthy Kyrie Irving. And we see how fickle the Eastern Conference is. It might have been a situation, had they been there this year, where they don't even have to play Giannis in the Milwaukee Bucks because they don't even make it out of the second round. You know, So we're going to have to sit back and, uh, and, and kind of take the wait-and-see approach. I hope it works out because at this point, the paperwork, the ink is dry. There's nothing that we can, we can do about it, so I hope it does. Smush Parker here, formerly up to the Los Angeles Lakers, and you are now tuned in to Real Fans Real Talk.